Hey people, how's things going? Um, I've got a new tutorial here on how to create a glowing effect in Maya using Mental Race and I'm going to show you how to create this image that I've currently got up on the screen for you here. So without further ado, let's get started. There's a few things that you're going to need to do in this. So I've set up this scene already and what we're going to do is we're going to make these two Tauruses glow. At the moment our scene has as you can see, just the default Lambert shader on it. Nothing very interesting going on there at all. So let's select our two objects that we want to make glow. And we're going to assign a new material to them. So right click, assign new material. The material we want to assign is the MIA Material X. And you just drag the attribute edit off. So I can give it a bit more space and show you what we're actually doing. So it seems to have selected the Taurus. So material attributes. Under the MIA material X1, if we come about halfway down, we find uh, the advanced tab. It's actually quite near to the bottom. Uh, one, two, three, four, five up from the bottom. Underneath this, there's a attribute called additional color. And this is what we want to assign our glow to. So if I select the checkered box on the right, it brings up our create render node box. Now this is a, as I mentioned, this is a mental ray. So underneath mental ray, we find textures, and right near the top, we find MIA light surface, and this is what is going to give us our glow. Now simply adding it straight up like this won't actually do anything. If I hit render again, you can see it's made them bright white, but they're not actually glowing. It's just basically a flat white color. So let's get rid of that. The color obviously controls our color, so let's say we want this to glow blue, like so. Hit render again, and you can see it's now it's the blue color we want, but it's still not glowing. There's a couple of things we need to do to make this glow, so I'm just going to move my attribute editor out of the way for a moment. We need to come to the render settings. First thing, under the common tab, we want to come right down to the bottom where it says render options. We need to turn off enable default lighting. And this is actually produced by the final gather. So that on its own isn't actually going to make it glow. Again, it's just going to make everything else black so we can't see it. So come across to indirect lighting in your render settings. And down here, you want to just turn on Final Gather. Again, still not going to actually be glowing. The last step that we need to make this work, if we come back over to our Attribute Editor, and this is the attributes for the MIA Material X1, under the Advanced tab, the Additional Color, you see there's a Final Gather contribution here. If we increase this, I'm going to say, let's put it to 5. Now when we hit render, you see our render times are taking a little bit longer. But now you can see we're actually starting to get a glow coming off of our two torses onto the objects around them. Now we can mess about with several settings. Um, we, if we lower the intensity to say perhaps 0.2, hit render again. See, we're getting a much duller glow. Bring that back up. And uh, let's say put the final gather contribution up to, let's try 50, see what that does. As you can see, it, it now spreads out a lot further, but is a lot more intense around the actual object. Now this is quite good to show you this one other thing. You see the quality of the final gather around the edges here. This can actually be fixed in our render settings. The Easiest one to use is this final gather accuracy. Um, we can increase this, it will increase our renders times, but will make our renders look better. So if I put this up to 500 and hit render, you can see the quality is starting to get a little bit better, but that actually took a lot longer. That took 35 seconds to render. Another thing we can do to increase this, if we let's put our accuracy back to 100 and put point interpolation up to 100, and render this 
you can see we're actually getting a much better quality around here so let's bring our final gather contribution down to something a bit more reasonable uh, 10 and I actually like to have my intensity uh, a little bit less than 1 so I'm gonna go 0.9 I find it just produces a nicer image if I hit render there you can see we now actually have quite a nice glow now one thing I do just want to show you about this as this is a final gather glow it's actually only where the light hits an object that it shows you any sign of the glow and to show you what I mean if I come back to my scene you can see this torus that's actually on the top if I render it from say this angle so this torus isn't going to be hitting anything on the outside of this sphere whereas the torus on the bottom is if I hit render now you can see we're getting a nice glow on the floor and a glow up on the sphere where the two toruses are reflecting on them but you can see there's actually no glow on the outside as I said this is a final gather glow so it is actually bouncing off the objects correctly however because there's no objects in the top half of this image for it to bounce off then you're not actually seeing a glow if you wanted to glow up here you would need to use an additional post process to give it that final sort of look but this gives you a good idea of how to start play around with these settings um, you want to play around with the color the intensity and the final gather contribution in your material and for quality wise under indirect lighting you want to play around with the accuracy and the point interpolation in your final gather settings as usual, I hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions, post them below. I always try to get back to everyone. If you've got any other videos that you'd like to see me do, I'm always open to requests. Don't forget to subscribe for my latest videos. Have a good day. See you later.